Hello out there. A very good day to you people. And uh, welcome to uh, our sociology course titled Principles of Social Organization. I hope uh, you have gone through the slides. Uh, you have read it carefully. And uh, our encounter here will be meaningful to you. We are beginning with session one. And uh, we want to talk about the development of sociology as a scientific study of uh, society. Uh, well, this session basically provides definition of the subject matter. And we describe the conditions in uh, pre-18th and 19th century uh, Europe. And then we try to identify some factors that give birth to sociology. So basically, we define sociology as subject matter. We describe the socioeconomic conditions before the 18th and 19th century in Europe, describe the social change that actually European societies experienced, and then that necessitated the scientific study of society. Now, we can define sociology as a field that studies human society human interactions, and human behavior. Now, how do we get a definition of society? Society can be defined as a, a group of people who occupy a clearly defined geographical area, share a more or less the same culture. They think of themselves as one, interact, cooperate, and carry on the essential tax of living. And so that is a brief definition. By social interaction, we mean how people relate to one another, and then they influence each other's life and behavior. Now, sociologists are interested in how the group influences the individual. And you know, you can contrast with how psychologists are more interested in the individual uh, himself or herself. Sociology is one of the social sciences. Social sciences are those subjects that study human behavior in society. So they include, in addition to sociology, the political science, economics, and uh, psychology. Now, let's start as to how sociology came about. And uh, before we can do that, I need to send you back to pre-18th and 19th century uh, Europe. Well, simply we can say that Europeans, uh, today you see that they are modern, they are developed, like that Britain, France, Germany, and all that. But they were also ones like Africans, very traditional, you can say primitive, and all that. And uh, before the 18th and the 19th centuries, life in many parts of Europe were like, just like Africa. I mean, their worldview were dominated by uh, mythical, religious, and spe superstitious explanations, as you know, most of us have in Ghana now. And uh, most of the Europeans live in relatively isolated small communities, and they were dominated by kinship and extended relations. And for most of them, even they live in those communities throughout their life with little interaction with the outside world. At that time, the church particularly the Roman Catholic Church, and the kings, the feudal laws, or what sometimes we refer to as the nobility, they were at the top of society, uh, more or less enjoying uh, life, all the resources and all that. So the rest of the people were peasants, or in their own term, they called them the serfs. Now, the feudal laws, uh, the system of feudalism uh, operates this way. Uh, the feudal laws owned most of the lands, and so the church also was in existence, and the kings or the monarchy. And so the rest of the people have to work for them, and so there was a kind of social distinction. We, we can say social class. Uh, in spite of this, uh, social distinction, we can see communities were relatively peaceful and stable. And there was face-to-face -face interaction among them, just like, I say, as I said, many African societies. 
But these relatively stable communities or societies were to change because Europe began to experience an industrial revolution. And uh, this is a time, if you read uh, about inventions and all that, you see that the inventions that we have for many technological advancement today began in the 18th and the 19th century. And so we have a situation where industries were growing and they were giving weight to industrialization and all that. So Europeans began to see how their relatively peaceful, harmonious, agrarian communities were changing. And now that actually changed the whole society in the sense that they had to adapt to new transformations and all that. But even before then, uh, Europe, for the first time in its history, experienced a political revolution. Uh, particularly that revolution, the epicenter of the revolution was in France. Because earlier on, uh, philosophers of enlightenment or enlightenment philosophy emerged to begin to examine European societies. And then they found out that European societies were based on social distinctions. And so the structures were not making for human happiness and human progress. Because, as I said earlier on, the social distinction confines some people to be peasants forever and others to be the nobility. And so they, the nobility were enjoying that the experience of others. So by questioning these structures, uh, the philosophers became social critics. And as they critique society, they began to, what I would say, ginger people on, provide, they provided the ideas for critical thinking. And so in France in particular, there was a revolution, and that is the French political revolution of 1789. Now, that revolution was the first one that ever happened in the whole of Europe. And so it changed the whole system. The peasants, the masses, they all revolted against the establishment, the system that was in place. And so this brought about chaos, social disorder. And so France, from 1789, up to about 1799, France never experienced peace or order. And so this was a time when some of the philosophers began to look for ways to restore order. And through their intellectual work, they began to call for a, a new science of society. But then, as I said earlier on, Europe was also experiencing the growth of science and technology. Inventions were coming, industries were also uh, progressing. And so this also changed the whole social landscape that peasants had to move from rural areas to urban areas to look for jobs. So uh, we can isolate the first factor that gave birth to sociology as the French political revolution. And the pe French political revolution actually destroyed the monarchy, the kingdom, and the, the kings, and all that. So, you know, it's interesting to know that up till today, we don't have a king or a queen in France just because of this revolution. So France is a republic. Now, the growth of science and technology also led to industrial revolution and urbanization. Cities expanded. But you know, just like in Africa or Ghana, when cities expand, there's urbanization, social problems also emerge. So social problems like overcrowding, uh, squalor, prostitution, you name it, just like we have in uh, Africa. So this also drew social scientists into studying social problems of the day. And so we see the beginning of uh, the expansion of the subject matter of sociology incorporating uh, social problems as well. 
Then there were some who were so disgusted by the industrial revolution, the social problems that it brought to the ordinary people that they wanted to do away with the capitalist industrial revolution and replace it with a socialist uh, state and all that. And of course, as science was progressing, there was a, a decline in religion. Because, uh, you know, when the people don't have scientific explanation to many of the issues or puzzles of life, they resort to religion. But once industrial development and science is making progress, then the influence of religious explanation also uh, go down. And so we have these as the major factors, as well as the Enlightenment ideas, colonialism, and you know, the Europeans who were the first to move out of their continent and then take advantage of other people, colonize them, and then uh, they got exposure to many cultures, many societies. So all these factors came together to push for a scientific study of society. So we come to the end of session one, where we basically we have discussed the definition of sociology, factors that give birth to sociology. And so the slides are just to give you details of the explanations and all that. So we now move on to session two.